Well, I'm still on cloud nine from Sunday is absolutely fantastic battering of Eric Denag's time wasting Manchester United. But there's another game. The fixtures are coming thick and fast and the push for Champions League football is on. It's the West Ham match preview, so make sure, Newcastle fans, you stick around. <laughs> Welcome back to Black and White Banter, you absolutely beautiful Newcastle fans. I hope you're having as good a week as me. I really, really do. My God, what a day that was on Sunday. If you haven't already, please go down and give my match vlog a watch. I hate Manchester United, as I talked about plenty on the preview and during the vlog. I really do. And a win like that is just memorable. But not only that, a performance like that. This, that, for me, was the performance of the season. It was almost, you could argue, the complete performance from the very, very first whistle to the last. Every single player on that pitch outdid themselves with work rate, with quality. Um, yes, obviously, we could have taken more chances, but we didn't have create a lot, didn't we? And we scored, and that's all that matters. And that win, I said at the start of that, um, of that game before the match, that if we didn't win against Man United and we got beat, it wasn't the end of the world because we were still in that mix and Man United were seen as one of the teams pulling away a little bit. But if we did win, and win we did... Um, that was just crazy for our season. Now we are above Man United in third. We are level on points with them. And we are just looking so much stronger than the likes of your Tottenham's, your Chelsea's. I mean, if Chelsea are even in the mix now with losing Potter, I don't even know. But we are looking the informed team in an amazing time. Because if you'd gone back four weeks ago, you would have said, nah. I was saying it. Fans I was talking to after games were saying it. It was all over social media. Maybe 6th, maybe 7th, Champions League looks very unlikely because we can't score goals. Alexander Izak has put his boots on, decided to get himself fit. And our Swede, our beautiful Swede, I think has spearheaded that attack. And we now look just back in the swing, back what we were used to before Christmas. That this fantastic high press. And long may that continue as we now move on to West Ham away. The fixtures are coming thick and fast. Midweek, I'm not going down to West Ham. I did have a ticket, but I sold it because I'm some, I'm hopefully going to Brentford on Saturday and then Aston Villa the week after. And with work and a dog and life, a midweek Air London trip for the time I would lose with work and whatnot and everything else I've got going on, it's a lot. So fair play to every single Newcastle fan who's doing West Ham on Wednesday and Brentford on Saturday. Best fans in the world. But this is another big game. But this is a winnable game and this is a game... I think the Premier League this season has been so crazy. One of the best seasons I can remember. Every single position is open for grabs. League position, uh, relegation, Europe, league. This is one of them for me, a season where, yes, on paper we should go to West Ham and get a result. But the, the paper that we are looking at this season is so difficult. And West Ham got a fantastic result on Sunday. They're fighting for their lives. They're having a very indifferent season. I don't really think West Ham want their manager. I think the, the feeling I get is that David Moyes, his time might be up. They overachieved last year. They, they smashing it in the Conference League this season. Say what you want about that. I'm not here to talk about West Ham. But it's a difficult match. That West Ham team that we played earlier in the season, uh, well, earlier this year, it wasn't great. We weren't very good that day. But I don't look at this West Ham side and worry too much about individual players hurting us. Um, and, you know, I'll touch wood on that one because comments like that can come back to bite you on the arse. But I don't. I don't think this West Ham side have a standout player to watch for. Maybe I would have said uh, Bowen once over. Paquetta, um, Mr Bruno's best friend, partner in crime. You might have maybe said him, but he hasn't looked that great a player since he signed, in my opinion, when I've watched West Ham play their football. Antonio, he's not doing very much. Uh, Shemeke, 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 the striker, he hasn't really set the world alight. They've got a lot of good players, but none that are really at the races. 
And we are the total opposite of that at the moment. We are a team who's got a spring in our step again. Three wins in a row, which is so difficult to do, particularly this season, as I just mentioned. And we are going there full of confidence. We really, really are. And it's games like West Ham away on a Wednesday night where you are pushing for Champions League. If we are serious about getting Champions League, that I think are the big ones. I really, really do. If you can go to places like that, under the lights, under the cosh a little bit, probably for parts of the game, hostile atmosphere, because let's face it, West Ham fans are hostile. Even if they're not fighting relegation, they're a hostile bunch. They just look, they like that reputation. But these are the sorts of places you need to go and get results. Not draws, wins. And Brentford on Saturday is a difficult, different proposition compared to West Ham altogether. An informed side, very difficult to play at the community stadium. Totally different match in my opinion. That's why West Ham on Wednesday takes a little bit more it takes a little bit more significance and importance because then we've got Aston Villa the week after who have just won again. As I do this video, they've just won. And they're in form as well. As much as I dislike it and don't like to say that about Aston Villa, it's two very, very hard uh, away games after West Ham against two very informed teams. So you're looking at them and you maybe think we might slip up in one of them matches. I mean, I wouldn't bet against us at the moment, not after that Manchester United performance. But West Ham, we need to go there and make a statement. Now, teams, I was very pushy before I knew about bringing Joe Linton back in. Eddie Howe chose not to do that, which I respect because we'd won two off the belt. Keep the team the same. I know players might need freshening up because of the run of fixtures. We've got three in six days, which is quite a lot in the Premier League. But don't change a winning, a winning uh, run they've had. Uh, Monday to recover, Tuesday to recover, most of Wednesday um, before the actual match. Keep it in. At the most, I think Eddie Howe, if he was looking to make a change, I don't think he'll bring a central midfielder out. So I don't think Joe Linton will come in. I think he would maybe look to freshen up wingers. Anthony Gordon looked really good when he came on against Man U, which was a great plus. Everybody did. He might be someone maybe to look come in for Murphy, but then Murphy played so well and he's doing so good for us at the moment with his work rate, with his direct play, with his willingness to whip a ball in. He's quite pacey. You don't want to take him out. You don't want to take anyone out because that Man U performance, I keep banging on about it, was that good. And that's what Eddie Howe has created. And we, we, we see in that bar raised again because now if we show up at um, the Olympic Stadium on Wednesday and don't put in a similar performance, it's frustrating because we've watched a team, yes, roared on by the St. James's Park crowd because the atmosphere was brilliant on Sunday, but we've seen what they can do. We've seen what their energy levels are. We've seen what the quality with the ball is. We've seen how we can press in numbers and defend in numbers. And we just want more of that. Let's keep this momentum going. And I'm not going to bet against us. I'm certainly, certainly not. But team-wise, I would not make any changes. I don't think there's any injuries. Not that I'm aware of. Uh, Willock went off uh, against Man United, but I think it was just precautionary because he'd ran his socks off. He's in form. Bruno looked good on Sunday. Maximin's looking a lot better. But these are the kind of games, on the topic of Maximin, he loves to do it against Man United at home in front of the Sky cameras. He loves to do it against Manchester City when we draw on three all again in front of the Sky cameras. Can he do it in a relegation threatened side on a Wednesday night? It's like that old, that old same uh, cold stoke on a Tuesday night. These are the matches we want him in. These are the matches away from home where Alan St. Maximin is the sort of player. Not only can he carry the ball up the pitch in times when we against the against it a little bit, but he can also shut the crowd up. He can scare them. He scared Ed Diallo on Sunday. He could do that again against these lot. And again, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fully confident. And I'm still processing what happened on Sunday. I really am. The, this game's come too fast for me. I'm still enjoying taking the piss out of my new fans on social media. Which is great. Because they're biting like the biggest shark you've ever seen out the water. Just Eric Ten Hag's face on a shark. <laughs> Amazing. Um, so long may that continue. Awful bunch. But I'm going to go for a win. I'm going to go for a Newcastle 2 0 win. I think we're going to keep a clean sheet. Botman and Shea were fantastic against Man United. Absolutely fantastic. Alexander Izak at the other end looks absolutely hot as fire. Literally, he's looking worth every penny for the age he is at the moment because he just looks like he's getting sharper and sharper 
He's pressing. He's running channels. He's touches silky. He's linking up well. Wow. So I'm going to go for a Newcastle win. I'm going to go for Isaac to score first if I'm going to go for a first scorer. And let's make another big statement that, that we made the biggest we could have on Sunday. Huge statement in, in us being serious contenders for this Champions League. Now let's do the quieter stuff and go to a relegation threatened side in the bottom half and bring three points home from that one before then. Two really difficult away games coming up. I'm confident. I, I, I'm devastated I'm not going, but I'm going to watch it on the telly with a big grin on my face in the, in the pre-match in the build-up because Newcastle United season has restarted. And whatever they did on Sunday, whatever was said in the dressing room, whatever they drank, whatever they ate, do that again, lads. Repeat. Just everything you did on Sunday, from the first whistle to the 95th, repeat. And I think we'll do it. As always, Newcastle fans, drop down. Let me know your thoughts for Wednesday's game. The football's coming thick and fast. I'm, I'm good. I'm not going down there, so there's not going to be a match vlog. But if you've stuck around this long, give us a little like. It goes a very long way, and it makes these videos worth it. Um, whack that subscribe button and get us across all social media. I've just dropped the video that's gone viral on Bruno Fernandes, very tearful following our defeat of Man United on Sunday. Make sure you check that out, and I'll see you, hopefully, for another very happy match review straight after the game on Wednesday night. How are you, the lads? <laughs>